And Zach here. So today I'm going to talk through breaking down an automation mesh job. So if you've ever uh, used automation mesh and run a job through Ansible Automation Platform, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing to understand exactly how this job is being run and how it's being executed compared to what you're doing locally, whether that be Ansible Playbook or Ansible Navigator. So what I want to do in this post is just walk through how you can get really close to the exact job execution. Um, to give you a little bit more insight into how things are being done when you launch a job from AP. So the first thing I want to do is just quickly go over how an execution node is chosen. So if I go into my AP instance, I'll show you quickly kind of what my topology looks like. So I've got a very simple topology. I've got a controller node here that only does control type jobs. And I've got a single execution node that is specifically used for executing AAP jobs. So in this topology, um, of course, it's it's only one execution node. You could imagine having multiple. Um, you may even have some hop nodes in there to get from controller to the execution node itself. Um, but the important piece here is that my intention is to run the job on an execution node. So how does that actually work? Well, it depends on your instance groups. So in my case, I only have one execution node and it is a part of the default instance group. Um, if you have multiple in instance groups or if you have multiple execution nodes in the same instance group, to kind of go through this troubleshooting process, I recommend making sure that whichever instance group you're targeting, so in my case default, you only have one node that's enabled. Right, so I had multiple nodes here, I would just go ahead and enable the, disable the other ones. That way I can ensure it's gonna run on a particular node and I can connect to that node and kind of observe the job execution as it's happening. So in my case, I don't have to make any changes, but if you did have multiple, just leave one enabled and make it one that you have access to connect to to watch the job. So the next thing I do um, is I come into my job templates and I created kind of just a dummy job to see what's happening. If you have a long running job, go ahead and use that one. But in my case, I created a sleep job and then I created a parameter that I can pass through pause minutes that will just basically keep an Ansible job running so that I can kind of do some troubleshooting and give myself time so I don't have to rush through it. So the next piece of this, like I mentioned, is going to be connecting to your execution node. So in my case, I've already SSH to my exec node. Um, and one thing I want to do is go ahead and switch to the AWX user. So I'm going to do that real quick. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and check on receptor and check the status of my receptor socket. And if you aren't familiar, Receptor is basically the tool used for AWX or AWS, sorry, Ansible Automation Platform to communicate from the controller to the execution nodes it is working with. All right, so with that command, you can see I get some information out, right? I've got a connection to my controller, so my controller 22.local. Um, and just some additional information there, but this just guarantees to me that, yes, in fact, I do do have a good, healthy connection going on right now. And then I can also use that similar command, and instead of saying status, say work list, and see if there are any jobs running. So this is an empty object. Um, if you aren't running any jobs, this is to be expected. In a moment, when I kick off my dummy job, we will reuse this command to see kind of what's going on when I create that job. So if I come back, to the Ansible Automation Platform. Um, I've, already, I've already created this job. The template, the playbook here, um, it's linked in my blog, but it's very simple. It's just one task with the ansible.builtin.pause and it sets minutes to five. So we'll go ahead and launch that. And because this job only has one option for an execution node, like I mentioned before, I can guarantee that it's gonna run on the one that I'm currently connected to. So if I go back over here, I should be able to rerun my work list command and voila, I can see that I actually have a running job now because it's the, the sleep job that I just ran. So if I want to dive a little bit deeper into kind of what is actually going on in this job, I'm going to take the job ID that I see in that previous output right there and I'm going to say work results and then I'm going to give it this ID that is found in that object. If I click enter, so this is actually going to watch 
um, the job results um, as it goes. And if you look kind of closely, this is actually what will be pumped back to AAP and displayed in the job viewer kind of as it's running. But if I scroll up to the top, this initial step is what I was particularly interested in. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna copy this object in some sort of text editor, and then I'm gonna go ahead and prettify that so I can see. Oop, I had two objects there. Let me go ahead and do that again. So this is that object that I wanted to take a closer look at. So if I zoom in here, this is giving me the exact details of the run that was kicked off when AAP connected to my execution node. So you can see the, pan the command here is we know the way AAP executes job and execution environments is it uses Podman and runs in isolation. So we can get the exact command that's running, see some of the, the options that are used, um, and you'll see like we've got our image here. So this is the execution environment that I was pointing at, and then the Ansible playbook run, and then it's actually pointing at the playbook sleep.yaml. Um, and passing the extra vars, so that would be any extra vars that I set in AP. If I scroll down, another really useful piece of this is that I can actually see all uh, several environment variables that are um, part of this run. So what I was debugging when I went through this process was I was actually looking for the callback plugins, and a really nice thing I was able to see is the exact environment value, um, and then I'm able to actually step into the execution environment itself and see what's in that directory. So in order to do that part of it, if I come back here and exit out of that command, and I'm gonna say podman ps, just see what images I have running, and then I'll say podman exec, and it is, what is the name of my, so it's Ansible runner 31. And then I'm going to say ls, and then that, that directory with the callback plugins that I got from the environment variable. And voila, so look at that. It, it listed out the callback directories in the execution environment, and now I know exactly what I have in there. So I hope this helps you if you're, if you're going through a process and you're really trying to troubleshoot what's going on in a particular execution environment. It's not always obvious, so this is one way to kind of get a little bit closer to where the things are happening and and figure out any issues that you have, may have. As always, if you have any questions, just drop a comment, and I hope this helps you out. Thanks.